स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so good morning everyone so in today's lecture i am going to cover certain aspects of the solution of euler lagrange equations namely some of the aspects we have not covered so far yet so we have looked at the various cases or the various solutions of euler lagrange equation for different case scenarios but here are some of the issues that we have missed namely the invariance issue or what happens to the solution of the euler lagrange equation when we change the coordinate system of our solution so how does euler lagrange equation changes with a change in the coordinate system so that we will discuss in invariance and regarding whether the solution even exists or not is going to be discussed in this second topic and further we are going to generalize our euler lagrange for more uh complicated complicated problem problems right so these are the three topics i'm going to cover over this entire discourse of this lecture so let's start <coughs> with the first topic namely invariance invariance of euler lagrange equations right so as i said invariance has everything to do with what happens to the euler lagrange equation how does it changes with a change in the coordinate system let's say from cartesian coordinate to polar coordinate and so on so forth right so the motivation of this discussion is as follows we know all know that uh, any physical phenomena or any physical principle should not and does not depend on the coordinate system of uh, of our choice so if we were to represent any physical system uh, uh, which is occurring in nature uh, as a mathematical equation that equation should should be independent of the uh, coordinate frame we are working whether it is polar whether it is cartesian it should not matter and which means that if we are solving an euler lagrange equation for a physical phenomena that euler lagrange equation should also be independent of the coordinate system so so the motivation of this discussion as i just said is as follows so what we have is that principles <coughs> principles in physics that lead to variational formulations principles in physics that lead to variational formulations formulations they do not they do not depend depend on the coordinate system right so what i just said is principles in physics they do not depend on the coordinate system that we have we have numerous examples one example is the geodesics on a plane or the geodesic problem so the determination for example the determination of geodesic is frame independent right whether we want to find and later on we will show that uh, we will show that when we find the geodesic on a sphere it is sometimes better to find the geodesic using a polar coordinate rather than a cartesian coordinate frame right and we will see that the geodesic comes out to be identical right so the determination of the geodesic or the optimal path is coordinate free right so this is one case which we will see in depth later on so based on this motivation one expects that the euler lagrange equation should also be coordinate free because many of these euler lagrange equations they describe the physical phenomena which are also coordinate free right so one expects one expects uh Uh, on on physical on physical or geometric background one expects on physical or geometric basis 
basis that Euler Lagrange equations are also uh, well are also are coordinate invariant right so this is the expectation this is the intuition that is provided to us and we will show that this is indeed the case in the form of a theorem later on so what i have just said is if i were to find the euler lagrange equation uh, let's say with respect to any frame uv let's say variables uv which represents another co coordinate frame that should be the same euler lagrange equation that we just described so far in the earlier lectures in the cartesian coordinate frame right so 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 let us uh, continue this discussion uh, in a more rigorous fashion right <coughs> so so let us look at let us look at a coordinate transformation so let us look at a coordinate transformation a coordinate transformation uh, where x is a function of u comma v and y is a function of u comma v right so the coordinate transformation this coordinate transformation is smooth this coordinate transformation is smooth if 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 there exists continuous partial derivatives there exists continuous first partial derivatives continuous first partial derivatives with respect to with respect to u comma v and and we have a non singular a non singular jacobian we have a non singular a non singular jacobian which is given by the evaluation of this following set of partial derivatives which is nothing but the determinant of the following matrices matrix x u or the derivative of x with respect to u y u x v y v right so the jacobian should not be zero only then we can guarantee that the transformation is smooth and uh, and you know uh, orthogonal right so so that is what we assume so that is the underlying assumption right so either this we either denote the jacobian by this or the determinant of this matrix right so then let us look at a functional so let let j be a functional let j be a functional j of y which is also equal to integral x0 to x1 f of x comma y comma y prime dx right so let me call this functional as my expression as 1 right and let me further call this result this assumption so this is all assume this is assumption here we call this assumption by assumption a right and let let me describe the set s my set s to be the set of all so let s to be the set of all second partial derivatives between the intervals x0 to x1 such that y of x0 is y0 and y of x1 is y1 right so we assume we assume that so this is the the setup to describe the euler lagrange equation in another cartes another coordinate frame u comma v so this is the basic assumption and this is the setup that we have now further further uh, let us uh, look at the other set of assumptions that we need we further assume so we have two coordinate frames we have x y coordinate frame and we have the u v coordinate frame so we are trying to deduce the euler lagrange equation in this frame in the u v coordinate frame 
given the Euler Lagrange in the Cartesian frame. Right. So, further we assume that V is a function of u. Right. Why we do that? Because if we this assumption is similar to the assumption that y is a function of x. So, y is the dependent variable which is dependent on the independent variable x. Right. So, so we continue with the same assumption. So, which means dy dx the derivative of y with respect to x is dy du divided by dx du which is also equal to y u plus y v v dot divided by x u plus x v x v v dot right. All we have done is apply the chain rule and that gives us the derivative of y with respect to x in terms of completely in terms of u and v right. So, so let me uh, let me continue. So, which means my d x my d x is nothing but d x d u times d u or this is also equal to partial x partial u plus partial x partial v v dot times d u right. So, then then it implies it implies that my 1 my Jacobian 1 is identical to j of y which is equal to the integral x naught to x 1 f of x y y prime d x right. Okay. So, what we have is that this is also equal to the integral u naught to u 1. So, now we are going to substitute the different variables in the Cartesian frame in terms of the variables u and v. So, namely my x, my x is my x is a function of u and v. So, we have we directly apply the coordinate transformation rule instead of x we use the rule x of u of v, y is also a function of u and v and my y dot or y prime which is dy dx is found out to be y u plus y v v dot divided by x u plus x v v dot ok. And then finally, my d x my d x is found here above which is also equal to x u plus x v v dot times d u right. We also see that this integral is u 0 to u 1 f of u v v dot times d u right. So, let me call this. So, we have now finally reduced our functional completely in the form of the new coordinate system u and v. So, let me call this as 1 prime. So, this is the analog of the functional in the Cartesian frame right. So, then my new boundary conditions we have to also change the boundary conditions right. My new boundary conditions are x naught is equal to x of x of u naught v naught and my x 1 is x of u 1 v 1 and my. So, I am directly using the coordinate transformation to figure out the boundary conditions in this case and similarly my y naught is y of u naught v naught and my y 1 is y of u 1 v 1 right. So, so, so let us let us uh, let us further redefine our set where the extremals are going to come from that is the set S right. So, so let my set S S be redefined right. So, I am now redefining everything including the set. So, redefined including the set S from the Cartesian frame to the u v frame. So, my new set is the set T which is equal to all v v in C 2 of x naught x 1 such that v of u 0 is v 0 and v of u 1 is v 1 right. So, we see that this new set T is the is now the set of newly defined functions which are second order differentiable with this new set of boundary conditions ok. So, we are ready to describe 
the Euler Lagrange equation, the equation in the new frame. So, what we have is the following we ask the following question. The question that motivates our discussion is the following. So, if V in this new set T is an extremal, is an extremal, okay. Let us go back a slide. Let me call this new extremal as k of v, right. So, I am calling this new extremal as k of v. My older extremal was defined as j of y, right. Okay. So, this question is if v is an extremal, extremal of k, right, described in 1 prime, then then is y in S an extremal, an extremal of the set S, or sorry, of the functional j and vice versa, right. So, v is an extremal of k, then is y an extremal of j and vice versa, right. So, so we are going to answer this question in the form of a theorem that this the answer to this question is yes, right. So, so that the result in the form of a theorem is as follows, right. So, the theorem says suppose y is in the set S and my function v is in the set T b b two functions b two functions that satisfy that satisfy the smooth e two functions which satisfy the smooth non singular singular transformation smooth non singular transformation a a was the set of assumptions that we had here a okay smooth non singular transformation a okay then then y is an extremal then y is an extremal extremal for j y is an extremal for j if and only if i have v is an extremal extremal for k right so the answer to this question above that i posed is yes via this theorem right and i am going to prove the proof is very straightforward right so suppose uh, suppose we assume one side suppose we assume that v in k uh, sorry v in t is an extremal v in t is an extremal for for the functional k then then v must satisfy the euler lagrange so v satisfies the euler lagrange equation right so what i have is d d u del f del v dot minus del f del v is equal to 0 right okay okay so we see that this is the euler lagrange being satisfied in this new coordinate frame so that is my assumption now i know that i know that uh, that my f my f uh, let us go back a slide notice that my my f here this particular f is nothing but this whole quantity times this whole quantity. So, f is the product of small f of this argument times this particular quantity in this bracket, right. So, so my f, my f of u v v dot is, I am just rewriting whatever I just said, is the product of this quantity of this quantity y u plus y v v dot divided by x u plus x v v dot right. 
times x u plus x v v dot. So, that, that is my f. So, all I have to do now is to plug this f into this Euler Lagrange and figure out all these partial derivatives in this boxed equation, right. So, let us do that step by step. So, so, so what I just said is the following. So, del f del v dot is, so I am going to differentiate my f with respect to v dot and we see that when we do, do that, let, let us go back a slide a bit, see that v dot appears here which is a linear form uh, with respect to v dot and v dot also explicitly appears in this third argument of small f. So, we need to differentiate these two arguments, these two quantities, right. So, so which means using chain rule, notice that this third argument this third argument of small f is nothing but y prime, the transformed y prime, right. So, I can rewrite using chain rule that this is also equal to del f del y prime times derivative with respect to d v dot partial derivative of y prime, right. y prime is y u plus y v v dot divided by x u plus x v v dot, right. So, this is my y prime. So, I have just used the chain rule, right, and times the factor that was remaining, right, plus then we differentiate this factor, we are only going to get x v times f, that f that we did not differentiate, that we differentiated earlier in this, in this first case, right. So, that is my del partial f partial v dot, right. Similarly, we can evaluate the other partial derivative del f del v and we see that, uh, let us go back a slide to see where does v appears. Notice that v appears here, right, v also appears here in the second argument and also appears in the third argument and also it appears here, right. So, so we can we can, we need to differentiate with respect to each of the uh, argument variables of f and as well as this bracketed term, right. So, my partial derivative of f with respect to v using chain rule is partial f partial x times x v per plus partial f partial y times y v plus partial f partial y prime times partial partial v of the quantity this quantity in the bracket which is y prime y u plus y v v dot divided by x u plus x v v dot right ok times x u plus x v v dot right. So, that is the first uh, term of the product rule and then the second term of the product rule will be f times, we differentiate this quantity in the bracket with respect to v, we are going to get partial, partial v of x u plus x v v dot, right, ok. So, then all we have to do is to substitute these expressions given by a and b in, so substitute, substitute a and b in let us say expression 1, let us see we have defined expression 1 or not. So, this is my expression 1, right. So, we substitute a and b in expression 1 and then after all the simplifications, you see that our equation reduces to the following form. So, the original form of the equation was the following minus partial partial v and this is also equal to del x comma y partial u v times del del x right. Well, let me let me just change it to it turns out that this is also equal to after doing all the simplifications after substitution of a and b we get to the following stage where this quantity on the left of the Euler Lagrange reduces to the following quantity 
this is also equal to del f del y prime minus del f del y and students can all see that this quantity which I have bracketed is nothing but the Euler left hand side of Euler Lagrange equation in the Cartesian coordinate. So, from here let me call this as 2. So, from from 2 I will just say that theorem 4 theorem 4 follows as simple as that because if this quantity on the left hand side is 0 implies that the only this quantity on the bracket the bracketed quantity on the right hand side will be 0 because the term the Jacobian term can never be 0 otherwise the coordinate transformation will be singular right. So, the Jacobian is non 0. So, theorem 4 follows right. So, which means that Euler Lagrange equation is coordinate independent or coordinate free. So, that is a very good news. Let us look at an example. 